I would like to introduce Rocky Anderson, former mayor of Salt Lake City. Let's send the message, welcome to Utah, a state that actually welcomes and values all of our brothers and sisters. Our nation and our state in particular are facing a crisis. It is a moral crisis, a crisis fed by bigotry, injustice, and a lack of empathy for millions of our brothers and sisters who want the same things we all want, to work, to provide for our families, and to live in peace. It is also a political crisis, a crisis of cowardice and opportunism. It is a crisis of utter failure by our elected officials to take the necessary actions to exercise compassion toward those who have worked hard, cared for their families, and contributed to our communities while providing our nation with a workforce that drives much of our economy and our supply of food. Our elected representatives have provided abysmal leadership. And they have failed us for the basest of reasons, the same reasons that Senator Hatch first supported the DREAM Act, then tucked his political towel and opposed it. These politicians have utterly failed our nation year after year as they have neglected to enact federal legislation that will help provide us with the workforce necessary for a strong economy and to allow as many as 14 million people in our country to come out from the shadows and stop living in fear at, of devastating persecution and deportation. Notwithstanding the vast ignorance and mean-spirited, fact-free assumptions of many of the people in this country, the crisis is not caused by undocumented immigrants and their families. Rather, the crisis is a product of those who selectively invoke the rule of law when their obvious objective is to rescind the promise reflected by the Statue of Liberty's message of hope and freedom for immigrants coming to the United States. Let us all remember the sonnet that's associated with the Statue of Liberty and has been from the very beginning. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. The message of the anti-immigrants is that the golden door should now be slammed shut. No. Stay out, they scream. No. They point at hard-working immigrants and their families and blame our problems on them while ignoring the true sources of our recession, the upheaval of our economy, and the unprecedented disparity in wealth and income in this nation. It is a small-minded, nativist, xenophobic, supremacist message, counter to the grandest traditions of our nation, and counter to the higher morality that tells us simply that we should treat each other as we would want to be treated. The surveys of people throughout the United States tell us so much about the misinformation driving the tremendous bigotry toward undocumented immigrants 
the same sort of bigotry that was aimed in earlier times against Irish immigrants, Italian immigrants, Jewish immigrants, Japanese immigrants, and others. Usually, the majority of those responding to polls express unfounded fear, and fear seems to prevail over so much of what's happening in this nation, and this fear concerning undocumented immigrants is no doubt driving so much of the division that we're facing now throughout this nation, and especially now in the state of Utah. The respondents to these polls that are taken regarding the issue of immigration think that these immigrants will take jobs away from Americans. They think that they'll end up on welfare and they believe they are an economic drain on our states and our nation. Well, these are the reasons often proffered for the adamant opposition to allowing otherwise law-abiding people to work, care for their families, and live in peace. But the fact that those reasons are counter to the undisputable evidence gives rise to the conclusion that there is something else, something far more sinister, behind the almost hysteric hostility toward millions, perhaps as many as 14 million immigrants in the United States. There is no crisis of rampant unemployment caused by people who have come to this nation to work and to make a better life for themselves and their families. Our, current, our nation's current unemployment and underemployment situation is a result of a recession and economic upheaval caused by greed and fraud, mostly by enormous investment in financial firms, by regulators and enforcement officials who have allowed all of it to happen, and by the corruption and ineptitude of those who were elected to represent our interests, but who instead have served the corrupt interests of their campaign contributors by deregulating the financial industry. Let us all, and by all I mean every single one of us, from the Tea Party to those who are here today, let us all understand the true causes of our recent economic travails and take measures to correct our nation's course rather than being diverted by the hostility and misinformation that has led to mindlessly scapegoating immigrants. The research clearly reflects that because immigrants are consumers as well as workers, they create an enormous demand for investments, goods, and services, thereby creating more jobs. Other research has demonstrated that undocumented immigrants allow high-skilled workers to become more productive and increase their income. And it is obvious that there are not sufficient replacements for the undocumented immigrants who work on United States farms. Just look at this account in the Washington Post where it is written, check out the asparagus you have for dinner, the cucumber in your salad, and the pear on your plate for dessert. Chances are none of it would be there if not for the undocumented farm workers who plant and pick most of the fruit and vegetables grown in this country. The Washington Post continues. Nonetheless, faced with a serious and growing shortage of legal agricultural labor, Congress has followed the same playbook it has used for the broader issue of illegal immigration, 
political cowardice and empty slogans followed by inaction.